Today we're talking England and football, inevitably. It's the only thing that everyone's talking about after the events on, on Sunday evening. I'm joined by Maggie Pagano, uh, executive editor of Reaction. I'm Ian Martin, editor of Reaction. If you don't subscribe to Reaction on YouTube, it's really straightforward. Just hit the subscribe button below and go to the site to get uh, all the great journalism that the team does. Now, Maggie, firstly, what do you make of the aftermath? I mean, there is just a, this extraordinary atmosphere, hasn't it? Sort of gloom <laughs> settled over the over the country. We're going to talk a, a bit more about the, the, the political and social impact rather than the, the football footballing side of it. I certainly don't claim to be an expert on that. But it wasn't really what the country needed or wasn't how the script was supposed to go. So there's just this overwhelming feeling of sadness, isn't there? There's no other way to, to say it. Sadness, heartbreak, fury, disappointment, <laughs> everything. And they, you know, they'd been on such a winning streak. And I, what was so lovely was seeing the country really join behind them and be united. So I think as well as the, the fact that they lost, there was this sense that the whole country was wishing them on. And that was the real disappointment, wasn't it? You know, yeah. after Brexit, pandemic, I suppose every European country could say this. We're not an exception in that uh, respect, but it's been such a long time. And Southgate has just acted so nobly throughout and so have the team. So that brings us to the aftermath and some of the rather horrible comments that, um, that we've seen on social media, of course. We've got to be careful, it's a tiny minority. Um, but, you know, I, I, how much of it is disappointment? Say it being Kane and Maguire that had lost their, their penalties, maybe the anger would have been the same. But, you know, there have been some horrible comments like, you know, Rashford should concentrate on penalties and not school meals, which were really below the belt and totally unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I wonder on, the, on the, the, the question of it being a small minority. Obviously, it is, sorry, it is a small minority, but I don't think Kane or Maguire would have got the same, uh, same abuse, actually. I mean, it might have been directed fans from other fans of clubs that they don't play for might have mentioned mentioned that but i don't think there'd have been anything as as vicious as the stuff that was on social media as you say from a from a minority i have to admit that it's also made me rethink slightly i mean there is an upside which is that both of or all three of them they so, who missed penalties their social media accounts have been flooded in the hours afterwards after these horrible comments with people pointing out you know how proud the country is of them, and that they, 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 you know, this is not the end of the world, and they will be back. And criticizing those who have been, uh, you know, have been so so cruel and, and and racist. But I must admit that it made me rethink a little bit on the uh, the question of taking the knee, mm. and you know, mere culpa, perhaps. I mean, I, it, it was very easy in the the aftermath of what happened in last year in the US and spilling over into culture wars in, in, in Britain. I, I just, I didn't like, you know, the, the association between the link between BLM in the UK and then in the US and sort of Marxist, let's be blunt, connotations or beliefs of the organization. And to see the England team then use that as a symbol, but then it's clear that the team had co-opted it themselves and were not necessarily subscribing to every single strand of what the organization thought. I, you know, I just, I was on the side of, not on the side of booing them, certainly not, that would be disrespectful, but I, it made me uncomfortable to see politics introduced to, into sport in that way. However, the events since England lost do rather vindicate the players, don't they? They vindicate those young men who do have to take that abuse on a daily basis and it's then amplified at a moment of national um, you know, grief or trauma like this and if they and their colleagues felt that they wanted to take the stand and that makes a difference to them I, I now see things slightly differently. I guess I, um, I, I, I never I didn't really get hung up about it on either side I felt that um, probably most of the team or anybody taking the lead didn't have a clue what the BLM was really about, but it became a sign of uh, caring uh, and wanting to express 
their thoughts that, you know, this is something that a lot of their, as you say, teammates go through. And I also thought it would sort of die down a little bit. And so I never had a problem with it. What I think was really daft, and I'm sure a few leading politicians in the country feel probably fairly silly now for having criticized it. And, you know, politicians really should stay out of that sort of thing. So I think it was overblown on both sides, um, but you're absolutely right. If it makes people think a little bit about what the young players um, go through, then it has to be a, a positive thing. What about the, the implications for, for England. I mean, maybe that we we talked about it on reaction last week. Maybe there are no political implications. It's just another it's just another football match and another another defeat in trying circumstances. But there does just seem to be this, and I speak as a Scotland fan who wanted England to win. Always want England to win as long as they're not uh, drawing against Scotland or playing Scotland. Then uh, you know, but something, but something. It's definitely there, isn't it, in the national, for want of a best term, psyche, this sense of the sense of England being jinxed. And I, what I, my hope was about Sunday night was that you could get beyond all of that, that a victory would mean that you got out of the cycle of 1966, 1996 with Euro 96 and started fresh with something a bit more optimistic and a more optimistic idea that, well, England are a great footballing nation and should be in the final of these things a couple of times a decade and should, should win it at least once a decade or, or the World Cup or the, or the European Championships. And I suppose that's, you know, my heart sinks thinking we're, we're still, you know, English society still then stuck with this kind of grievance, grievance you know thing. Eh? But we've overlooked the fact that we were in the semi-final against one of the finest teams in the world. You know, actually, that in itself was a great achievement. Who would have said? Finally, mean, finally, mean in the final. Than... Sorry, in, came second. <laughs> that we were in the final. That is such a great achievement. I mean, who would have thought that five years ago? And I think we really mustn't undermine Southgate's achievement or the team's achievement. And he, he's picked this really young, raw, fantastic bunch of kids who, over the next few, and they're all what in their twenties. You know, got they've got years to go. So I think actually. Hope is a dangerous thing, but you know, this is just the start. This is the World Cup next year. Um, what going back to what you said earlier, and what really, really made me unhappy about this a whole episode the last week was, if I may say so, some of your countrymen and the Welsh and some of the vicious nastiness towards England. I I think I took my breath away actually. And the front page of the national, whether it was tongue in cheek, I don't know. But I mean, I had no idea that it was such hatred. Again, there's a small minority of England, you know, who take it to extreme, who perhaps give um, this sense of Englishness a bad name. But I, 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 you know, it's, it's astonished me actually, really shocking. And as most people, yeah. comment, if it'd been Scotland in the final or Wales, um, I can't see that sort of uh, hatred which was shown. So maybe we need a Britain team. Should we have a Britain team rather than an English? <laughs> I, t I don't think the Scots or the Welsh or the English would actually would, no, would go for that. But I, no, I no, I, I see what you mean. I mean, there are Scotland fans who I know, friends who don't support England, but they are real, real football fans, right. and didn't want England to win this on the basis that why? Well, on the basis that if you're a Scotland fan and you've been hearing about 1966 since 1966, then, you know, and, and England is not your team and you support Scotland and Scotland's greatest rivals are England, then you don't want them to win. I, that's not my view. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm seek, seeking not to justify it, just to explain it. So there is that strand that's always been there. Mm. Scotland's biggest rival is England. But then, annoyingly for the Scots, England's biggest rival is not Scotland. It's not Scotland. It's, it's, it's Italy. Germany. It's Germany or Italy or, or Spain or other <laughs> other great teams in the teams in the world. So, so we find that annoying and maybe difficult to cope with. I, I do agree with you, though. On the national, I, I mean, I had a lot of, sort of very pro-Scottish English friends on WhatsApp and Twitter, who were really taken aback by the national thing and annoyed by it. I thought it was ludicrous, but this is the national yeah. we're talking about. It's not as though it's the it's not as though it's the Scotsman or the Glasgow Herald or a great Scottish media brand and that did it. I mean, the national is 
you know, without impugning it too much, is a sort of fanzine of, of a certain hardline parts of the, the nationalist movement mm -hmm. and did that probably thinking it was quite funny, but also trying to get noticed and trying to go viral. Mm -hmm. So a kind of negative marketing vibe in the hope that it would remind people on the hardline side of the nationalist um, divide in Scotland that they exist and, and, and exist to successfully manage to, uh, to annoy lots of English people. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you broadly. I just think it's really sad. It's really you know, with two, two neighbors who are you know, great, friends you know been through so much together as countries it pa it puzzles me why more scots can't just enjoy yeah. england's success and wish wish their neighbors well but that's simply that's kind of not not how it is but it's a it's definitely become more uh, uh, venomous and bitter mm -hmm. since scotland stopped being kind of great footballing country which is that's at the root of it all that I think English people don't understand as as England have become this powerhouse again in global football through the Premier League mm. and that has produced through a combination of immigration just the sort of in technical improvement in the game in England competition mm. money cultural vibrancy all of that has produced this has now got in, gets england to the semi-final and finals of major uh, tournaments which at some point they will they will win and english football is is on the up scottish football has suffered a terrible decline since the since the 80s which really kind of begins with and it's, you, you first see scots really start to understand that in, in euro 96 with the, the gaza goal but Scottish football, though we produce some, still some very good players, nothing like the way in which we dominated or played an outsized role in the English game in the in the in the seventies primarily, but in the seventies and the eighties and through the great Liverpool sides or or Man United, lots of lots of other clubs that had great Scottish players, but that came out of working class Scottish culture, heavy industry, the world that made. Uh, that made Sir Alex Ferguson and made Dalgleish and Souness and Hanson and all of these players now no longer really exists. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that long-winded explanation on my part for why why the Scots take these things, um, or some Scots take take these things worse than they should. Are they doing anything to try and repair that, to build back? Oh, on the football, sorry, I thought yeah, you meant repair the, the relationship with England, not really. No, no, that, that's <laughs> too much, but just their own football. What are they doing to get back in the game? It's always struck me as it, one of the great mysteries of Scottish devolution, mm. where Scotland has had, in public spending terms, masses of money mm. through you know, various public um, spending surges, so have other parts of the UK. I'm not saying it's Scotland in particular, but Scotland's done quite well in public spending terms. There's been a Scottish Parliament in existence for 20 years. Mm. I find it completely baffling, and no one can tell me why in Scotland, why, if you were interested in bolstering national pride and national achievement, mm. which nationalists are, but also unionists are as well, but if you wanted a positive agenda for Scotland, I don't know why you wouldn't pour money and resources and international know-how into reviving football at a grassroots level and I, what I, I would do sort of 50 50 with rugby as well and both men and women's football and men and women's rugby and when you know that there's a public health problem as well in scotland in terms of obesity poor health yes. generally why would you not spend some of that money and ensuring that over the course of 10, 20 years, you establish training academies and national expertise, bolt stuff on properly to the universities. I mean, there've been a few attempts to do that sort of thing, but nothing sustained. I mean, isn't, isn't that something that the Scottish Parliament could have over the so course weird. of 10, 20 years said, well, look, there is a, there's a concrete, yeah. concrete achievement. But As we say, it would go right from the grassroots, local clubs, local academies. Well, there's something for Douglas Ross to push. Possibly, yeah. Well, he's a, a you know football um, a football official. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe absolutely. you're maybe you're right. Maybe that's Actually, an agenda. For him. I just want to go back to you know the the, the horrible abuse that the three players who missed the penalties got. What I don't understand is 
Um, why, in a sense, I mean, it was Southgate's decision to play, to let those three play the penalties. So it, really the responsibility rests in his hands, not the fact that they missed them is 50-50. So uh, I'm surprised. I mean, I, I wouldn't criticize them for that their choice, but if you're going to criticize, then surely it's Southgate's tactics that should be under scrutiny. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm looking forward to reading in the, yeah. in the in the days ahead. I'm sure there'll be some great technical analysis of what went wrong with with Southgate. It's not in, in terms of his game plan because he was in England. Let's face it; it's not as though England England were dominant and then were unlucky to lose on penalties. They were outplayed Out for lost. sort of two thirds of the of the game. They were brilliant at the start, and then Italy. Italy worked out how to deal with that, and they tried to initially to do uh, what had troubled Italy in the past. The only way to, to trouble them was to go wide and to use a lot of pace, and that produced the that produced the, the the goal within two minutes. And then Italy worked it out, and their manager is tactically and strategically rather brilliant, and outplayed outplayed England. So maybe it was just an example of Southgate for all of his fantastic qualities which we all admire and his decency maybe he was just sort of tactically out, outplayed by a mm. someone referred to me this morning as a you know super manager just some someone who mm. completely understands the gamesmanship and the tactics and and it, and it worked it worked again it worked again for Italy but no I, I think the other aspect of it which is worth mentioning and I know someone's writing about this for the for the site because they emailed me saying shouldn't someone address this on mm. on reaction is the drunkenness yeah. which of course it's a minority but the, the, the some of the scenes in in london and it was apparent on the fringes of other games some of the scenes at the stadium mm. plus the kind of drinking from 11 o'clock till eight o'clock let's be honest it wasn't all a, i know it's a minority but it wasn't all a, a glorious national festival of unity there's a strand to it to it and a strand to it, a, th a thuggishness to it, which doesn't seem to apply to other European nations. What is it? It's a thuggishness. Um, I don't know, the English seem to need drink to let themselves go. Other nations don't need it in the same way, do they? I mean, I bet in Spain and Italy, there was, whilst they've been during their matches, there's been just as much festivity, but not the, not this ridiculous drinking. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what we. Um, it, I don't know how we change it, or how we can really help these kids. But I mean, the pub next door to to where I lived, they were started singing and drinking at eleven o'clock in the morning, and it went through till eleven, and then there was deadly silence. But they must have been, you know, I shouldn't think they could walk by eight o'clock. Yeah, very sad. Why? But we then there's a lot. Work? But there's a lot of pent up energy yeah. and frustration isn't there from the crisis yeah. so it's partly that but and so it's maybe magnified by that just what, what was would normally happen in, in England on these occasions and I stress this is not the over not talking about the overwhelming uh you know majority and should point out as well when Scotland fans were in Leicester Square yeah I'm sorry it was I've seen I've seen the footage and saw the wreckage afterwards it was not a happy jolly occasion not a few a fans thing. came to clean up but what happened, Scott, with England fans there also happened with um, with Scotland fans on a, on a on a smaller scale. So that may, maybe the answer is in that brilliant young team. Maybe the answer is that in terms of the the, the culture mm -hmm. and encouraging people to behave and reiterating that you can do this without smashing the smashing the place up comes from Southgate and some of the some of the players. Maybe that's that. That's going to have to be the case if England ever wants to hold a World World Cup, because after last night's scenes at the stadium and some of the footage out of central London, there's no way that UEFA would um, would reward England with a with a World Cup. So some something is going to have to change. And if we end on end this um, this reaction video on YouTube on a hopeful note, hopefully it can come from those those brilliant young players who set such a good example. Okay. And maybe if, Southgate should say something too, actually. Yeah, he should, yeah, there would hope so. Comments. Yeah, would hope so, because a lot of people are talking about it and it, it's just this uneasiness. Perfect. People know that it's there, but it wasn't as happy and united and 
joyous uh, as um, as is otherwise being being claimed. I, th I thought it was very good. Gary Lineker actually on his social media account spoke out on precisely that ba basis, saying it it's it is a minority, yeah. but it exists and people have to start talking about it. So that was that was good to see. Yeah, and I think if we if we wrap things up there. Um, if you're not a subscriber to Reaction on YouTube, you just hit the subscribe button. You can also listen to our podcast or you can go to the main site. You get my weekly newsletter on politics. You get Maggie's brilliant writing. You get all of the writing from the team as a Reaction subscriber. There's a, th a free 30 day trial on at the moment. So you just have to submit your email and no credit card details but you can try out everything on reaction for 30 days and then hopefully sign up and become a subscriber until next time thank you for joining us thank you